Hey everybody, welcome back. And we are finally to skeletons. And, you know, why finally? Well, because eventually everything that we've been doing up to this point in the course needs to lead towards something. And skeletons are where that really starts to uh, take shape. I get it? Take shape? Skeleton? Anyway, what we're going to do uh, is the first part of this is the skeleton synopsis. It's going to go over what skeletons are all about. And this demonstration showing the previous problem that we just did, where they take the solution and then slowly show you, well not slowly, they just show you um, how a skeleton with something called pseudocode can start to uh, be a very good idea to start doing the first time through, which would be, which is to say that when you're solving a problem, creating a skeleton like this first is usually a very good idea. Now the problem of course is that it's not necessarily as easy as it looks to write stuff like this. And so what you might consider doing is going back to some problems that you've written previously and taking code that looks like this and removing it and making it into a skeleton first. But the other version of that is just to start doing skeletons as we will for the rest of these problems. So try to read a little bit of this if you can. Otherwise, just follow along with the rest of these videos and we'll get to it. So the first one we're going to do is called average. So you may have uh, remember that we've written a lot of average functions before, but this one is going to be the first one where we're going to be uh, approaching it with this idea of skeletons. And skeleton, good way to say a skeleton is an outline or a plan. All these are kind of in the same uh, realm. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a REPL. We're going to scroll on down to the bottom because we don't feel like signing in. Get a JavaScript one going. We're going to click on here and change the theme to dark. You don't have to. Uh, and then we're going to go and we're going to switch code intelligence off. Now, code intelligence, I think, is when you start writing something and it gives you like a hint of what it thinks you're going to write, and we're not going to have that. We're going to leave that off. Um, the reason we're going to leave that off is because it is possible that you would not have code intelligence, as it were, during your interview. So let's leave that off. Plus, it looks a little confusing from time to time. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab our skeleton. We're going to go over to Replit. We're going to pop it in there. Two functions, average and sum. And the sum function is going to take an array of numbers and it's going to return the sum of them and the average function is going to take an array of numbers and return the average and on line 5 you can see it says that they want us to use the sum function so if we have a, an average function that's going to return an average for some numbers and a sum function that's going to return the sum of some numbers we know the assertion function to be used is going to be assert arrays equal sorry assert equal so we'll say assert equal we're going to take an actual and expected value and a test name we're going to make a strict comparison between actual and expected. In the event that they are equal, we're going to console.log passed. Otherwise, we are going to console.log failed plus a test name plus our closing bracket. Expected, we'll put some quotes there, why not? Plus expected plus the end quotes, sorry, the end quotes, a comma, but got space, and then quotes to wrap around the actual value, plus the actual value, plus the closing quotes for the quotes around the actual value. So cool. And we're not putting that there, we're putting that here. Excellent. So now that we have an assert equal function, we can consider that if we run uh, a sum and an average, we can do this rather quickly. We can create one array that's going to be the input. We're going to say input is equal to one, two, uh, three, four, five. That'll work. And then we'll say variable actual sum. It's going to be equal to the sum function that we're writing up there, called on input. Variable expected sum is going to be 15. And then we'll make an a call to assert equal with actual sum. Oh boy, oh boy, everybody back up. Actual sum expected sum and test name should be should correctly sum an array of numbers now the reason that we're going to test this one first uh, well actually don't let's not worry about that for right now we're going to test both of them pretty much at the same time so we'll say variable actual average is equal to average on the input and variable expected average is equal to mm, three and then another call to assert equal, which is going to be actual average. 
uh, expected average and should correctly return the average of an array of numbers. Numbers. Okay, cool. So we have our test cases. And theoretically, once we have all of this, we've done a lot of thinking about these functions. We've thought about the return values, we've created a couple of sample inputs for them, and then we've calculated the sample output. It might not seem like much, but what you're doing when you've done all of this is a lot of thinking about your code. And it, oftentimes, people, if they mess up on an interview, tend to just, hmm, how would you say this? They try to follow a pattern that they've seen before without doing a ton of thinking about what pattern they should follow or what the problem is asking. Setting up something like this before you get started on actual code can be a very good way to make sure that mm, if there was something to be done for your ability to solve a problem in the, in, in, how do you say this? It's like if there was anything that could be done to help you solve a problem that maybe you couldn't have otherwise, setting up this so like a test case like this and giving yourself sort of like a landing zone which is to say that the only thing that we have to do after we write the code is hit run, that can be a very uh, good thing. It can be the sort of thing that um, mm, makes you look better in the eyes of the interviewer. It can help you organize your thoughts about the code. And the more that you do this, the easier it'll be to start uh, expanding your problem solving abilities uh, beyond the scope of this course and, and after the immersive and all that good stuff. So for the function sum, we're gonna write out some pseudocode. If we have a sum, we're gonna need to create a sum variable if we create a sum variable, we're going to need to return sum variable. Then, theoretically, not theoretically, what's the, what's the, what's the opposite of theoretically? Pragmatically? Anyway, probably something like that. Anyway, we're going to create a sum variable. We're going to iterate over the numbers. So iterate over the array of numbers. And here's, uh, we may have introduced this before, but I'm interested in it again. On line 13, because I've indented the pseudocode, I can assume that everything that's happening on line 13 is happening per an iteration over the array of numbers. So if I were to say something like current, I can assume that that means the current value in the array represented by the iteration I've gone to. So I'm iterating in theory using a for loop, so I'll have some i variable. So current is just going to be the value of the array at whatever i value I've made it to. So for current, we're going to say add current value to sum and save in sum, which is to say we're going to update sum to be whatever sum was plus the next value in the array. Now from there, I'm going to jump over to average. So for average, I'm going to uh, create sum variable, assign to call to sum function. Then I'm going to return sum divided by input array length. Now this, assign call to sum function, this is the first introduction that we're having to having a couple of functions that are going to work together. So create a sum variable, assign it to a call to the sum function, and I assume that the sum function accurately does what I want it to do, which is to say sums up the, the uh, numbers in an array. So let's start with the average function. We'll say variable sum is equal to sum on numbers. the sum divided by the input length, so we'll say return sum divided by numbers dot length. And that's it for the average function. Now I need to make sure that this sum function works when I call it, so I'll come down to the sum function and follow the pseudocode. Variable sum is equal to zero, return sum, iterate over the array of numbers for variable i is equal to zero. i is going to be less than, what are we calling it, numbers dot length. Uh, plus plus, and we're going to wrap this around the pseudocode. You don't have to do that, but it might be a little bit easier to watch if you if you're uh, you know using this as a tutorial. So we'll say sum plus equals plus equals numbers add i. So that's adding the current value to the sum and saving it in sum. So our sum function looks good. Our average function looks good. We've got two test cases set up. Now we'll go ahead and run this. In the event that it says passed for both, oh no, sum is not a function. Average, so on line six for average, variable sum is not a function. I disagree. 
I don't think they're going to love how many times I'm using the word sum. So let's kind of adjust that. We'll make this result, this result, we'll make this result, then we'll make this uh, calculated sum. Sure, why not? We'll see what happens if we do that. Now, sum should be a function, but we likely did something that was not, not a good... Mm. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, so uh, I would say pro tip, but it might be obvious that I am I'm not a pro. I'm just a little bit better than the people who are probably following this tutorial. But that's mostly what you need in these situations. The thing you want to keep in mind is that if you call everything the same uh, name, you're going to have a bad time. So what we did instead of calling everything sum, which we did the first time, which was a bad idea, we changed a couple of them so that this is going to be called result. We'll call this calculated sum. You just want to be careful about that because as we saw, uh, you can run into some problems if you name everything similarly. So let's go ahead and copy all of this. Come back here. Again, most of what you're going to get out of this problem is going to be basically what we just did, writing this in Replit. If you come back here, you're going to find out that the test cases, sorry, I have to sneeze, but I don't want to. Anyway, you're going to find that the test cases for this are not super comprehensive. Uh, in fact, it's really just going to see if you use the word sum inside of this average function. Uh, so it's not necessarily the end all be all to hit submit down here or hit run tests. And uh, yeah, so most of this is going to be about creating the skeleton in Replit, thinking about your function as it were, and then, you know, taking those lessons on uh, to the next set of problems. So if we run our tests, we get correct, and we're in good shape. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's have one quick look at the code again. And you want to keep in mind that all of the answers to these questions are going to be found in that reference answers and documentation section at the end of this module. So thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.